How's it going, knowledge seekers? Nico here with another episode of Tell Me More. This week, I want to dive into the topic of psychopath versus sociopath. The two terms are used interchangeably, but they aren't quite the same thing. In this video, I'm going to break down two different case studies, explain the basics of what a healthy personality should be, and get into the technical differences between the two disorders. Let's talk about it. Though often confused as being the same disorder, psychopathy and sociopathy are two separate psychological diagnoses. They have some overlapping symptoms, but are thought to arise from distinct causes related to nature and nurture. Certain people with these conditions can live unnoticed by those around them, while others get caught in the criminal justice system. While some become criminals, others are able to lead functional and successful lives. Let's start by dissecting two different case studies. Michael is a 57-year-old man. He has been married to his wife, Patricia, for 34 wonderful years. Together, they have two teenage daughters and one younger son. Every morning, Michael takes the family dog for a walk, returns home for breakfast, and then commutes into the city for his job as a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. He is calculated and driven, and is known as a leader in his field. Michael seems successful in every sense of the word. He has a lucrative job, a beautiful family, and a comfy upper-class home. Sean is a 32-year-old man who changes apartments whenever the lease expires. He is single and only finds himself in casual relationships. He can't hold a job, but when he is employed, his employers describe him as explosive and unreliable. He's been in and out of jail with a record of petty crime and disorderly conduct. He stays out late drinking, and the few friends he has know that he is a seasoned drug user. So what do you think about Michael and Sean? Well, Michael is a psychopath, and Sean is a sociopath. Are you surprised? Don't be. Sociopathy is easier to spot than psychopathy, but both disorders can fly under the radar. While Sean's behavior is a good indication that something is wrong, Michael's seemingly normal conduct doesn't mean that he's off the hook. Contrary to popular belief, psychopath and sociopath are not interchangeable terms. As you can see from this case study, the two disorders are actually quite different, but how could the lives of a psychopath and a sociopath, both types of antisocial personality disorder, vary so drastically? Before we decipher the differences between the two, let's cover some of the basics about personality. Think of personality as a big puzzle. An individual with a personality disorder will have a few essential pieces missing. There are three basic elements to a personality, as outlined by Sigmund Freud, that are crucial in determining our behavior. The ego, id, and superego. The ego's job is to mediate between the id and superego. When you ignore the other two parts and operate on the basis of ego alone, you run into some behavioral issues. After all, looking out for me above all else sends up some red flags. Psychopaths such as Michael are often seen as charming, trustworthy individuals. They hold steady, normal jobs and are often quite successful. While psychopaths are unable to form meaningful relationships or attachments, some are able to fabricate seemingly loving relationships with partners and in many cases, have families that are unaware of their condition. Michael had a wife, kids, and even a dog. A remarkable family situation that is less unusual for psychopaths than you might imagine. Sociopaths like Sean are often impulsive and erratic, in some cases, even prone to rage. This causes them to be less likely to have successful work and personal lives. However, despite their difficulties forming solid relationships, sociopaths are more likely to create close attachments to a few other individuals or groups than psychopaths are. We've all heard the age-old debate, nature versus nurture, that has forever divided psychologists and theorists. While this is arguably the most debated premise in psychology, researchers have been able to resolve the dispute as it applies to antisocial personality disorder. Psychopathy is determined genetically, nature, while sociopathy results from environmental factors, nurture. Environmental factors that may incline one to develop sociopathy include physical or emotional abuse or severe trauma experienced during childhood. Psychopathy, on the other hand, is all about the brain. Compared to healthy people, psychopaths have underdeveloped components of their brain. 
specifically in the areas thought to be responsible for emotion and impulse control, the main one being the prefrontal cortex. They also have physical differences that make it hard for them to identify the distress of others, and their basic bodily functions and responses are different than the normal population. For instance, when presented with violence in movies, a normal person would respond with a faster heartbeat, quick breathing, and sweaty palms. Conversely, a psychopath will get calmer when presented with the disturbing material. But don't worry, just because you don't get scared during a gory movie doesn't mean you're a psychopath. So you see, despite both being forms of antisocial personality disorder, psychopaths and sociopaths are really quite different. Some people with these conditions end up in and out of prison, like Sean, and others successfully hold jobs similar to Michael. While we've learned so much about them, it's still difficult determining if someone's a psychopath or sociopath, especially since they're so good at acting normal. Researchers of these fascinating disorders hope to shed more light on them in the future. Until then, you'll know the difference between the two. If you want to learn more about psychopaths and sociopaths, click the link in the description and explore our crime and mystery genre page. You're going to love it. I'll see you next time.